Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about medicine cabinets, and we'd like to thank Thomas Crowfell for liking and sharing the podcast. The first medicine cabinets started showing up in advertisements in the late 1920s, and they were holding things back then, like St. Joseph's aspirin, Vaseline petroleum jelly, Band-Aids were around back then, castor oil, mercurochrome, iodine, they had mercury thermometers, and the first disposable razor blades were created by Gillette in 1904. Why is that important? Well, you know what's interesting about some of the old medicine cabinets? They had a razor blade slot, so you would use these razor blades, and when when they started getting dull, you would just, this was a recessed medicine cabinet into the wall, they'd have a slot on the bottom, you'd take out the old blade, you'd put it through the slot, and it would fall underneath the medicine cabinet and into the void behind the wall between wow. the studs. That would be kind of dangerous if you're taking so, out a wall. Right. right. So, so that's where, yeah, so if you have, a, have an old home <laughs> and you're taking down a wall in a bathroom, be careful. Castor oil was around in the 1920s, and Pliny the Elder, the historic... He was not around in the 1920s. So 79 AD, Pliny the Elder <laughs> was writing about castor oil. He said it's great for the joints and scabs from continuous itching. Hmm. It improves your complexion and hair growth. Nice. And then mercurochrome, it was discovered in 1918. They used this to treat minor cuts and scratches. Hmm. And this would stain your skin red for up to two weeks. The nickname <laughs> was monkey blood. Hmm. And the U.S. stopped sales in 1998 because of fears of mercury poisoning. Mm. Medicine cabinets come in two styles, surface mount or recessed. With a surface mount cabinet, you're going to be attaching this directly to the wall. You're going to use a stud finder, find the studs behind the wall, and try to get all your screws into the studs. If you have a small medicine cabinet that's less than 16 inches wide, you want at least one side of the cabinet into the studs and then the screws that don't line up over a stud. Mm -hmm. You want to use wall anchors. Toggles are the strongest rated, but many of the self-tapping drywall anchors are rated 50 pounds or more mm. and they're very easy to install. Recessed medicine cabinets are set directly into the wall. So you're cutting a hole, creating a wood frame behind the edge of the drywall or plaster and installing the cabinet into that opening and the cabinet's going to have a lip to hide the opening and give a finished look without any extra drywall work. Right. To install a recessed cabinet, you want to make sure that the wall isn't a load-bearing wall if you're cutting out sections of a stud or studs. And you want to make sure there's not large vent or plumbing pipe behind the wall. Some electrical and water supply lines are move pretty easy. But, you know, see if it's worth the effort for you to do it. If you run into a load-bearing wall or large pipes, I would just install a surface-mounted cabinet right there. Okay. What is a load-bearing wall? So your load-bearing walls are taking the weight of the roof and the upper floors and distributing it down to the foundation. So if you have an unfinished basement and can see the I-beams or thick wood beams, this is what's carrying the weight. So walls directly above this are load-bearing and then the outside walls also. In the attic, if you're up there, if you see the large beams going across the house, these are the load-bearing walls are generally running perpendicular to the floor joists, okay, but it's sometimes hard to tell. So if you have blueprints of your house, that's going to show all the load-bearing walls. You're going to see an S on the plans, and it's going to show load-bearing. But I would and how many people would have yeah, blueprints? Yeah, well, new construction, like, but okay. but for most homes, I wouldn't guess. I would contact the local inspector or a structural engineer if you're thinking about starting to remove studs. So or that, walls, <laughs> right? Right. You would hate for it to the upper yeah. floors to kind of collapse on you. <laughs> To find out if there's electrical or plumbing behind the walls, you want to decide on the size and the location of your cabinet first and then mark the stud locations using your stud finder and then cut just a small hole in the wall and look around with a flashlight, see what's behind there. And you're probably going to have to cut two holes, one on each side of the stud. In most homes, you're going to have two by four wall studs, so they're 16 inches on center. The center of each board is 16 inches from the center of the next board except if it's near a corner or by windows. So that space from edge to edge is going to be 14 and a half inches. And you don't have to worry about the holes you're creating because you're going to cover that with the cabinet, <laughs> either a surface mount, you're just going to go right over it. Mm -hmm. Or if you end up, you know, cutting into the wall, it's, you know, you've already started the cutting. <laughs> 
When picking a medicine cabinet, the door styles are swing, slide, by view, and tri view. With the swing style, you have one door that's swinging open on a hinge, and it can be swinging to the right or the left, and you should know which direction you want. But you could have two doors. Right. That would be a by view. And then a tri view, you have three doors. Well, how is it a by view? So a by view is going to have two doors. A tri view is going to have three doors. Okay. So but that's you, so because it, it has a mirror on it? Because most of them are going to have mirrors. Not and all so, of them. Right. But a by, I have one that doesn't have a mirror. <laughs> but and if, it has two doors. Right. But so if, is that still called a by view? Yes. So you can view both the doors, I guess. Well, that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so back to the swing doors, you can get slow-close hinges, mm -hmm. and that's going to help protect the mirror and items inside the cabinet. You can get doors that open 107 degrees, 108, 110, or 170 degrees. And if you have one cabinet, and let's say it's a large cabinet, and you have so the door is pretty big. If you have two people getting ready at the same time, the doors that swing open 170 degrees are going to give two people more room to get ready, like in, in front of the mirror or in front of a vanity, rather than that door being in your way. Or you could just close the door. <laughs> you can get medicine cabinets with sliding doors, and this is going to have more of a retro look to it. It keeps the doors out of the way if two people are getting ready at the same time. And those older style cabinets, it's a metal cabinet with sliding doors. It has an integrated light on the top with a plastic shade, mm -hmm. and it's kind of a vintage style. Most of these are going to have a switch and an outlet built in and fixed shelves. You can also get very narrow sliding medicine cabinets, and these set underneath an existing mirror. So you can get these 30, 36 inches wide, 8 and 3 quarter inches tall, and 4 inches deep. Mm -hmm. That's the most common. You can also get something called a barn door medicine cabinet. So if you have a country decor, mm -hmm. this is very similar to the barn door closets. So, okay. there, so there's a top rail that this door slides on, but with these barn door medicine cabinets, you have one door, mm -hmm. so half of it is always covered. So the open shelves you use for decoration, okay. and then when you slide the door over, that's where you would keep your medicine and your toothbrush. Okay. Fancy. Yes. <laughs> I'll find a picture of it and put it on my Twitter account. There you go. <laughs> Byview cabinets have two doors that swing open. They can both be the same size, or one door can be wider than the other. Many of these are going to have 170-degree hinges. The tri-view cabinets are going to have three doors to create three compartments, mm -hmm. and the tri-view doors can be adjusted to give more viewing angles when you're getting ready, so mm -hmm. you can see more of your face. <laughs> with the 170-degree hinges, they'll have mirrors on both sides, generally, with these tri-view, and a variety of different swing patterns. For a more traditional look, you can get wood framed doors and match the wood to your vanity. So you can either match the wood color or if it's painted to match, you know, right. white to match the cabinet. Metal frame doors have a retro or a modern look and you can match the metal color to your faucet and your accents in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Frameless is interesting. So you can either have a thin metal frame to hold the mirror in place and that's still called frameless or it can be completely without a frame on the glass to give more of a contemporary look. Mm -hmm. And then there's specialty cabinets. You can get medicine cabinets that are angled so they'll fit into a corner. Hmm. You can get medicine cabinets with open shelves on the side or the bottom, or open shelves with baskets on the bottom, which is weird. Have you seen those where they have a shelf on the bottom? They have no, wicker, I have no idea what you're talking they about. They have wicker baskets. Huh. So you've got a regular door on the cabinet, okay. but then underneath it, it has an open shelf where you can put little decoration, or they'll have wicker baskets, yeah. which seem weird. <laughs> Some other features, you can get locking doors for child safety. You can get no fog mirrors. You can get magnifying mirrors. Some are adjustable, some pull out. Lights on the outside or inside of the cabinet, you can get outlets on this. Adjustable shelves, which are actually very right. handy. Adjustable hinges, and then you can have mirrors on the inside of the doors, the back side, and also the back side of the cabinet. So you get more areas where you can keep the doors open and still oh. look at yourself. No, no. Vein. <laughs> <laughs> it cut, you can get them in aluminum, plastic, wood, composite bodies. Aluminum's nice because it, it just doesn't corrode as easily. The most common sizes are going to range from 12 to 48 inches wide. Wow, that's a big jump. And 20 to 36 inches high. So you can really get a nice range. You can get also custom ones at much bigger size. Mm -hmm. And then 3 to 5 and a half inches deep. When you're planning on the size of your medicine cabinet and where you're going to place it on the wall, think about the proportions of the vanity or whatever you're placing this cabinet over. Mm -hmm. And are you going to have lights above it or to the side of it? Lights above it can create shadows. 
they say that lights on both sides of the mirror can actually give more even lighting. Hmm. Once you decide on the width, then you're going to have to decide on the height. One factor is going to be whether you have lights above this. And also think about the tallest person in your home. If you have a mirror on the medicine cabinet and you're going to be using that, you'd want that mirror to be a couple of inches taller than the tallest person. Well, what about the shortest person in the house? And then, well, how low you're going to have it, you know, is going to be the smallest person in the house. <laughs> and I would cut a couple pieces of cardboard and tape them up different sizes, and mm -hmm. it would give you a feel for what it's going to look like. Because you'll see a lot of recommendations that the top of the cabinet should be 72 or 73 inches off the floor, or the bottom of the cabinet should be 38 to 42 inches off the floor, or the center of the mirror should be 64 inches off the floor. But it really depends on the height of the people in your home. Right. Because you want it to match the shortest person and the tallest person. Mm -hmm. But you do need to think about the height of your faucet, too. Right. If you're putting it above vanity. Right. You'd want to keep the cabinet doors just above that. And then if you have a light bar above it, you want it to look symmetrical. So mm -hmm. let's say you have two inches between the top of the faucet and the bottom of the cabinet. Then you'd probably have two inches between the light bar and your cabinet. If you have an existing mirror above the vanity and want to keep it and add a medicine cabinet, a lot of designers are going to put the medicine cabinet above the toilet. Right. And if you have a bar to hold your hand towels there, you'd want to move that bar down. And let's say the bottom of your hand towels are a couple of inches above the toilet tank. Right. Then you would pick a cabinet where you have a space of a couple of inches from the top of that bar to the bottom of the cabinet and then the top of the cabinet would be even with the mirror. And most designers use a surface-mounted cabinet there. That way it's easier to get in and out of right. because you've got the toilet there. And that's the perfect spot for a deep surface-mounted medicine cabinet right. because it looks good when it's over the toilet like that, mm -hmm. or it looks symmetrical. The proportions look good. Well, I think so because that's how my bathroom's set up. <laughs> and it looks good. <laughs> Thank you. To install a surface-mount medicine cabinet, you want to find the studs first and mark them with a pencil. And a basic stud finder is going to find the edges of the studs. So you're placing the stud finder on the wall. You're pressing the button and slowly moving it across the wall, keeping it on the surface. And then it's going to indicate the edge of the stud. You keep moving that past it, and you'll mark it there. You keep <laughs> moving it past it until it doesn't sense the stud anymore. Then you're going to move it back and find the edge on the opposite direction. Okay. And so now you found the two edges, you make a mark in between those two marks, and that's the center of your stud. And if you happen to place the stud finder over the stud when you first placed it on the mm -hmm. wall, and then you depress the button and you move and you don't see any signal, or you'll get an error code. So keep an, an eye out where you put it on originally. Right. And then if you get an error code, you're going to move it over, you're going to let go of the button, move, move over a few inches, depress the button again, and now start to move it, and it's going to find the edges of the stud. What if you press the button first and then put it on the wall? So for most stud finders, if you press the button when it's not on the wall and then you place it on the wall, you'll generally get an error code. Because okay. when you put it on the wall and depress the button, it's sensing the density mm -hmm. behind the, the wall or the drywall. So if you you know do it in the air, it's finding the density of air. <laughs> and, then and then everything's more dense when you put it on the wall. So my dad had to borrow a stud finder from us recently. Right. And so we have a Franklin one. Right. And I'm trying to tell him how to use it because it's not like a regular stud finder, right. right? Right. So a Franklin sensor. So it has a row of LED lights. Right. You can depress it. You put it over the wall. As you move it, the LED lights light up whenever it senses something with more density. So it will paint a picture with LEDs where the full stud is. Right. So you see where the stud is. And so you can mark that center so much easier. I actually have a story here. Okay. Sorry. So... Was, Franklin sensor. Okay, so I'm telling him how to use the Franklin sensor. Right. And he's just like, that's not how a stud finder works. He's like, a regular right. stud finder, he's like, it's fi finding the metal, uh, the nails in the stud. I'm like, that's right. not a, that's not what you're doing, Dad. I'm right. like, that's, you're an find, old, every, that's an old style. <laughs> I'm like, you're finding finder. the edge of the stud with the regular right. it's so we had a big debate about it, and then you know he used it, and he's like, "I think it's, it's the best thing ever." No, he's like, "I think it's all messed up because it just it had so many lights on it." I'm like, "Yeah, whatever, Dad." <laughs> so. A couple top-rated stud finders, Zircon, Z-I-R-C-O-N, and they have a variety of stud finders and mm -hmm. Franklin sensors. So for a surface-mounted cabinet, you want to mark the stud locations on the wall and then use a level to mark with a pencil either the top of the cabinet where it's going to be or the bottom of the cabinet. And I also like to mark the center point on that line on the wall 
And then I'll take a pencil and I'll mark the exact center either on the bottom or the top wherever I'm using that reference line. And then it's very easy to line those marks up and you know where it should be. And a helper for this project is really great. You're marking what? I'm marking, so I'm going to mark, uh, I'm going to mark a horizontal line. Let's say I have a helper. Okay. I'm going to mark a line on the wall where the bottom of this cabinet's going to sit. I'm going to make a little pencil mark where the center of the cabinet is. And then on the bottom of the cabinet, I'll have a little You're mark. You're writing on the cabinet? Yes, with a pencil that okay, you can Okay, so erase. I watched a video where they put a piece of masking tape or painter's tape on the cabinet. Oh, that's and a great idea. And then mark that instead of writing on yeah, your brand always, new cabinet. Always use <laughs> painter's tape. Wow, what a great idea. On the wall and your cabinet, of course. <laughs> And then you line that up and it's very easy. For small cabinets with a, where you're screwing into just one stud, make sure that you get into the stud. You're going to use wall anchors for the other screws. For wider cabinets, have mm -hmm. all your screws into the studs. And on your cabinet, you're going to have a nailing strip on the top or the bottom inside the cabinet, or you're going to have pre-drilled holes. And have a helper line up your cabinet, get mm -hmm. your first screw in, and then use a level just to confirm it that it's level before you put the rest of the screws in. If you have a large cabinet or you're working alone and you're going to hate this, you can screw a 1x4 on the wall where the top edge of that 1x4 is going to be the bottom of the cabinet. That way you can rest it on it so that you can screw in your cabinet. Then you're going to have to compound and paint those holes. <laughs> and, and I can't think of a way we could use tape for that. No. But you could also, another thing that I've done is pre-drill some pilot holes where I know, so I'm going to, let's say I have pre-drilled holes in my cabinet. I line my cabinet up where I want it, I'm going to mark the wall, I'm going to pre-drill, and then I'm going to start running my screws into the cabinet so just about a quarter of an inch of the screw extends. Mm -hmm. Then I lift up my cabinet so that those the tips of the screws drop into those pre-drilled holes on my wall, mm -hmm. and now I know it's perfectly where I want it. That, that little bit of the screw is going to help hold it up while I'm holding the cabinet with one hand, and then I can finish screwing it in with the other if you're doing it by yourself and then you don't have the one by four where you have to patch and paint. <laughs> if you're installing a recessed cabinet and you're replacing an existing one, you're gonna remove the screws from the sides inside the old cabinet. If you have electric in there, you're gonna turn off the breaker to that circuit, remove any light bulbs or cover plates. You wanna loosen the cable clamps or nuts from fittings so the cabinet can be pulled away. Mm -hmm. If you're installing a recessed medicine cabinet into a wall and there's nothing there so you have to cut into the wall, you're going to create a template or use the cabinet to mark the outline of the hole you're going to create. You're going to use a stud finder to mark the stud locations and then you're going to use a drywall saw and cut out a couple small holes mm -hmm. so you can see if there's any electric or plumbing behind the wall. Make sure you turn off the electric to the bathroom when you're doing this project because you don't want to accidentally tie into electric. <laughs> For most projects, you'll have to remove a section of the stud. So you cut out the drywall. You're going to use a razor knife to cut the drywall just above the stud. And then to cut out the stud, you can use a reciprocating saw or a hand saw. You're going to be careful not to cut through the wall on the opposite side of the stud. Yeah, that would be bad. And then when you pull that section of the stud, you're going to pull out... Sometimes you're going to pull out a nail or a screw from the other side, so you might have to do some drywall repair on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can slide a hacksaw. So if you take a leather glove and grab just a hacksaw blade, sometimes you can wedge it behind the 2x4 and that opposite drywall mm -hmm. and work it up. And there's usually, you know, because you're only cutting out a small section, you're only going to find one or two screws mm -hmm. or nails, and then you can cut those out like that if you want to try to eliminate some drywall work. And we're making sure this is a non-load-bearing wall before we start cutting out sections of a stud. Mm -hmm. But once the hole is cut, you're going to use 2x4s for most homes to create a frame around the edges of the opening. You can use construction adhesive on the edge of the 2x4s to help secure it to the drywall. You're going to cut 2x4s the length from the cut stud to the next stud on each side of that cut stud. So this is going to be our horizontal pieces. Okay. You're going to have this below the opening, above the opening of the cabinet, and you're going to then drill through or, or screw through the drywall into the sides of these 2x4s and lock them in place. And then you're going to screw down into that stud that we cut. So I would pre-drill a pilot hole at a 45 degree angle so that we're tying those together. And then we're going to cut two vertical pieces to frame the sides of the hole. 
and that's going to give us a place to screw the cabinet into. Mm -hmm. You want to screw this into those horizontal pieces too, so you're going to pre-drill at a 45 degree angle so that you can tie this all together. And for this type of work, an impact driver really makes it easy to screw you know, the wood in without you know, it slipping, especially using oh, okay. one hand. One other thing, when you're putting these horizontal pieces in, sometimes you need to cut them very exact so they kind of wedge and hold. Mm -hmm. I sometimes take a screw to kind of use as a handle. So if you can visualize this long horizontal piece that we're going from stud to stud, and not long, I mean, it's going to be 14, right. 14 and a half inches. But I put a screw just slightly into the wood on top, and that just kind of gives me something to hold on to while I'm tapping it down with a hammer to get it perfectly horizontal. Okay. Once you have your frame built, you're going to put your medicine cabinet into this opening, and you should have pre-drilled pilot holes on the inside of the cabinet that you're going to use screws and hold it in place. If you have a cabinet with electric, you're going to need to make room or drill holes for the wiring, but check the installation instructions before you start for your model. Mm -hmm. And another tip, if you're putting a surface-mounted cabinet over a tiled surface, you want to make sure that you're drilling pilot holes in the tile first, okay. and you want to make sure that you're using a tile bit. You want to go very slow so you don't overheat the bit. Mm -hmm. Some of the top-rated multi-purpose bits for tile are from R2, it's A-R-T-U, Bosch, B-O-S-C-H, and Irwin, I-R-W-I-N. If you don't want to do any of this work, there's something really cool by the Zenith Home Corporation. They have something that's called a bathroom space saver. So it's a cabinet that you build around your toilet, and it just sets above your toilet. It's freestanding. <laughs> so, so it's pretty cool. There's, it, there's none of this worrying about drilling and holes Low or anything. Walls. Right? <laughs> yeah, forget it, man. So that's a cool thing to check out. There's another interesting website. It's called concealedcabinet.com. So they have recessed medicine cabinets with doors that holds either photos or art. Mm. So it looks like you have artwork on the wall, but it's actually a medicine cabinet. Ooh, fancy. That's a secret, and you can hide your money back there. <laughs> Restoration Hardware has a medicine cabinet made to look like a porthole on a boat. Oh, so cute. if you have a nautical theme mm -hmm. in your bathroom. And Joanna Blau, it's B-L-A-U, she takes old washboards and turns them into medicine cabinets. Hmm. And then Roburn, it's R-O-B-E-R-N, they make a medicine cabinet with an 8-inch LED TV in the door. <laughs> so that's the best. <laughs> Some top-rated medicine cabinets, Kohler, and they have a, a pretty wide selection, Zenith, Pegasus, Allen Plus Roth, and Jensen. Do you have anything else to add? If you're thinking about recessed medicine cabinets, make sure you check that it's not a load-bearing wall. Check behind there, cut a couple of holes, see if you have electrical or plumbing before you purchase it. Mm -hmm. And your surface mount medicine cabinet is going to be the easiest to install. I like a cabinet with adjustable shelves. It's going to give you the most flexibility to store different sized items. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Deep, 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 deep,